Okay, I'll just I'll get going here. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. And you're right, Michael, it's, uh, um, you know, a lot of questions about right now is everybody's diving into the deep end of online learning, remote learning, as, as, as Michael said uh, earlier. Uh, but it's really not that new. For a lot of folks, it feels new, but it's not as new as some, some may think. Online learning has been happening now for 20 years. Uh, we know that in uh, full-time online schools, there's over 400, nearly 400,000 students that are learning in full-time online schools today. There's thousands of teachers that have been a part of what online learning has been happening now for several, several years. We have schools in over 30 states. So I guess my message really, and our message over the last couple of weeks is not only does it have to be done because of the crisis that we're in, but it can be done. And I think that should give hope to families and teachers and schools that may be struggling and trying to figure out how, to, how can we do this. They can look to certain models that, you know what, this has been done and uh, it's been done well. Um, but it is a difficult transition. There's no question about it. We know in these online schools, most of them are there. Uh, the students are there by choice. Uh, in this case, families are not choosing this. This has been sort of thrown onto them. But, um, but again, if there was ever a time to promote innovation, to promote uh, partnerships with public education and new models of learning, today is the day. And, and you know, Jeff, that's, and that's what we want to do today. We want to point folks in the, uh, in the direction of where these things are. And I know, you know, they could go to the K-12 website right now and they could look at solutions that you guys offer and have delivered to a number of school districts over the years. Now, and, and, I, and, and we want to do that today, but, you know, just there are some policy issues that have come up. What about the equity issue? You know, we, is it impossible for some students in low income areas? And I know, you know, the chancellor of DC uh, traditional public school system has talked about how 30% of the city of Washington DC isn't covered. And, and it's just shocking to me uh, that I live in a city where it just already isn't completely covered by free Wi-Fi, right? Um, and then there's a lot of issues, and Jeff, I know, and, and, if, and if you can go deeper into this about how do students with disabilities learn yeah. online. And, and I just think it's shocking to me that there's a lot of people who are naysayers saying, this can't happen, this can't happen, this can't happen. And to Michael's point, They've always been this way about technology, right? Well, I think that's right. You know, I think what we saw in those first couple of weeks was a sort of paralysis of, you know, how do we do this? And then questions around equity came up. And these are, these are very real questions. How do we serve students who are in rural communities? How do we serve students with disabilities? Um, how is it possible to be able to, um, you know, bridge this digital divide that takes place? Um, I guess, uh, again, the, the issues, and, and I was really glad to see that there were a, a lot of momentum. There was a lot of momentum towards saying, these are challenges, but we're going to try to overcome them. And I think the, the, the um, U.S. Department of Education did an excellent job when it said that there should be nothing in federal law that should prohibit the shift to distance learning right now um, and to allow for districts to be innovative and creative and learn and help kids learn. Continuity of learning matters so much. But in the field of online learning, we've addressed these issues for, for, for over 20 years now. We've addressed them uh, with respect to low-income students, with rural communities, special needs uh, communities as well too. Um, you know, right now with K-12, there's over 15,000 students with disabilities that we're serving. From mild to moderate to severe disabilities, we're serving them. And interesting you know, about 85% of all those related services are delivered online. So I think there was a lot of questions people had is how can we possibly deliver special education outside of the classroom? Well, it is being done and it's being done effectively. In fact, it's one of the, one of the reasons why a lot of special education families choose online schools is because of the types of services, the way in which it's delivered um, is actually better uh, in their view. So right now our teams are working uh, to adjust those IEPs where there were face-to-face -face, um, services being provided to move them as, as quickly as we can onto the, uh, into the uh, virtual space, uh, and if not, provide those compensatory services. But we're very optimistic, our team is, uh, that it 
that it can be done and it is being done. Um, and you know, the other thing, online schools are providing technology and uh, internet access to students in, in rural communities. We're providing um, technology, computers to families who uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch. So uh, again, there are huge challenges, no question. I don't wanna suggest that it's not, but you know, looking to various models and how it's been done uh, should give hope to schools, to families, to educators that indeed it can be done. And that's exactly what we're trying to do, step into that gap and say, look, we know there's huge challenges, but we want to be a resource. We want to be a help because we have thousands of educators. We work with 6,000 teachers and there's tens of thousands of more online school teachers with expertise uh, to be able to do this. And, and I'll say this too, the families that we serve, the teachers that we serve, almost to everyone were, were in a traditional school prior to enrolling into the online school. They've made that transition. They have knowledge to share. And, uh, you know, so this is really a time, I think, for uh, ed tech providers, for online learning providers, for the educators that have been in this field for several, several years to really step up and serve and help their, their peers in the traditional system. And, and so, and let me ask a question because we're getting a lot of questions that are popping up and we'll get to those. Um, but I wanted to quickly ask, so have you been, have you, has the Department of Education reached out to you? Have local districts reached out mm -hmm. to you? Because you are saying that you're getting this done and, and we've got some questions from some rural areas. We have some questions of, okay, hey, look, mm -hmm. I, you know, we've got some sped, we've got some sped students. How do we deliver it? How do we right. actually- well, and Michael, let me just jump in here too. More, yeah. more also to the point, let's get really granular. And I know we should bring Anne in because part of the reason to have this panel is so we can also, she's doing early childhood at home and in rural. But I want Anne, you to jump in also for the rest of the conversation and for Jeff to address some of these questions we're getting. How precisely are you servicing the special needs kids? Teachers are struggling with that mm -hmm. is one question. You know, what are the tools? People are looking for tools. The difference between what we're doing today and you guys have to help us and we'll make, we'll, we'll work on right. it and we'll get all improved, but is to not be high level to say, here's what you can use now. It's not just you have to hire me for this product, but these are the actual things we're doing. We've posted yeah. things, we try to find them, but what are you guys doing to make, to make that happen? So let's have Jeff answer that and then and jump in and then keep kind of going through some of those questions too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you. And, and you know, I, I don't want to uh, suggest that I'm in any more the, the expert at the field, but that's why I work with a great team of, of educators that do this every single day. And, you know, they, they talk about the tools, the technology tools to provide accessibility to the students, the you know, speech therapy tools that they're using and so forth. We have webinars up on our website, um, and I know that uh, we're working with, this, to, to, to Michael's point, uh, with uh, state officials, with district officials, who that's their primary concern right now, and we're trying to provide them help and support along the way. But there are plenty of tools, there are plenty of, of, of methods, of, of, of ways to be able to address this. And I think the creativity that our team has done, and I think that we're trying to lend to, to expertise to others to be able to shift those IEPs into the virtual setting and provide quality services to those students that meet those IEP goals um, is, I think we're going to have a lot of success stories over the next few weeks. Yeah. Hi, Jeannie. Thanks. Um, for us, yes, we have been reached out to by state offices as well as, um, as, well as you know, some districts. But what we did is we sort of took a prioritization level and we said, we have 280,000 users out there. So three, the first 30,000 are our home users and they've been using Upstart all year and they have all of the services that go with Upstart, including you know devices in the home, internet in the home. Um, they have a family education liaison who's a coach. So literally for those 30,000 families, it has been an absolute seamless transition and they've been able to just move forward and work. Um, our next is our 250,000 students who have been working in schools. And what's interesting about that is, is all of those schools and all of those students have had access to what we call home access, the ability to um, seamlessly go from school to home. So, so at any time over the last however many years, students have been able to use Waterford in the school 
and then um, have it at home and and the the data goes back and forth between the school and home only a fraction of schools had ever taken advantage of that um, you know it, it it i don't know it was there was an equity issue with it for sure um, there was also just uh you know just the ease of of being able to send information home to the parents and get the parents logged in and and i mean we would we would do all of that and support that but it just felt like it was it was something that wasn't necessary in the school setting well and of course in the last two weeks that's become exceptionally necessary right so in the past two weeks we really have transitioned almost all of our 250,000 users into a home setting and it's been fairly easy and one i mean it's it's easy technologically because the tools were already there and in place um uh, what's what's been interesting is the training and it's been kind of varied and it's been kind of evolving as we go through um in that first week we had uh we had schools who were able to just with one small webinar they're off and running and they're getting and they're getting uh their their families up and running and then uh, some needed a little more support than that but what's happened in this last week which i think is interesting is we're starting to see we're starting to see everyone sort of settle in we've kind of gotten through um the crisis part of it and they're trying to get get back to business so this week um the focus has really been on how do we interpret data and support how do we track how do we how do we track the progress of the children and so that's kind of been our our um we we still have the webinars to help people get started to help people do home access but you know we had a webinar i think the other day that had almost 400 people on it that was all about tracking data and support for children and so that you know so that's been exciting to see to see that we're we're past the panic and we're into okay let's get to work how do we how do we make this happen so if if the both of you could answer that question and so when you said you shifted them over did you send did you send specific devices over for people to sign on? Jeff, did your, did your students that you're serving already have things at home that were set up? And I think that's what people are asking, you know, yeah. how do you link on when you're in the middle yeah. of a rural area and you don't have internet? Or right. how do you link on for a SPED program? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you guys have webinars on your websites, I hear that and people can go and get advice and, and knowledge there, but can you talk briefly, quickly about what that transition looked like from yeah. maybe some other schools that are struggling, yeah. still don't have enough devices, don't have enough login yeah. or, or devices to get onto the internet? Yeah, that's, that's something that we're providing directly to those families is that technology. We're trying to close that gap uh, when they come to us and they have those needs or that internet access, whatever it takes. Um, and, um, and so, and obviously with the IEPs, you know, there's, we, we, we will meet whatever, whatever it takes, uh, to be able to meet the needs of, of, of those students and to fulfill those IEPs. So, you know, we are shipping technology directly to the students. We're providing that internet access directly to the students. We're providing the funds for them to be able to, to get that internet access if need be. Um, and then obviously the, uh, the, um, the special education services for whatever disability any student may have and and have you guys had to uh, i'm sorry and go ahead but but also have you guys had to adjust to where maybe a kid is using a phone instead of a computer or an i or a, or a tablet or an ipad of some sort? well so for us the adjustment to different devices hasn't been an issue because you know we we pretty much will run on on any device and have support for that um, we we are not providing we're not providing the devices um, that has has fallen to the school. What we're finding is that schools uh, a couple of things is one thing in in certain cases schools are are ordering devices and um, I I, th I think that kind of the issue is going to be down the road is how many Chromebooks are really out there today ready to to be ordered and deployed so that so that becomes kind of a problem if, if every school in the country that ordered a Chromebook for a child who doesn't have one right now, we'd probably run out of Chromebooks during this crisis. Um, but I do know that schools are doing a lot to make sure that they can, uh, that they can support kids. So they're looking at things like uh, they're doing, they're doing um, uh, surveys of their families, like direct surveys. Do you have a device? Do you have internet? And then trying to figure out if they, if they've got something to support it. A lot of, I've seen a lot of schools um, that 
that are almost one-to-one -one in their school district, but they haven't been sending those devices home, especially in my space with young children. And so yeah. now they're, so now they are sending those home. I got a picture yesterday um, from, from a school in Maryland where they said, where it was the principal just texting me to say, Hey, we're sending home our devices, you know? So, yeah. um, so I know in certain cases they've ordered in other cases, they're redeploying devices that they already have into the home. Um, you know, but, but a couple of things that we're doing to support too, is that, is that we're providing some other resources that could get to any parent. So we have a, a new program that just started on Monday called Waterford Boost. Um, it, and, and it provides a three time a week video lesson and, and activity that a child can do um, just so that, so that mom and dad have something you know, in their hands. If, if they have nothing else and they have a phone, they've got that. Okay, you know, three, let me, three let me, lessons let me narrow in. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ann, but, but you just said, so, so Jeff and Ann, Ann, answer this first. So you just said um, you're offering a new service. People don't have to have contracts with you guys to tap in to these solutions, right? Um, so in what age group yeah. was that program that you were just talking about? Because I know there's a ton of parents with pre-age kids who are yep. trying their best to get them to do it. So give me specifics. So yeah, so um, so water so waterford.org backslash boost, you just sign up and and information gets pushed pushed to the parents three days, three times a week. Lessons that'll probably take 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week for parents to do, and it just gets pushed directly to them. So waterford.org slash boost. Um, the other thing is, is, is by contacting Waterford at homeaccess.waterford.org um, for schools and districts, we are providing licenses uh, for free and, and these ongoing trainings for free for, you know, for basically any school and district that, that needs the support for K3 students. Um, so we're, we don't have a, we don't have a consumer model, so we don't have a way for like a parent to to come in, it has to come through a school or district. But, but yeah, we're we're standing at the ready, and and we've already signed up about another about an additional thirty thousand students just in the last week or two weeks um, since we started making this offer. So, um, right. we're not we're we're not on all of the free lists out there, but we are. Uh, you know, if people know about us and can find us, um, we we really want to help. Um, and want to do it efficiently. So yeah. yeah so we right, do and let me see, when you say free lists, um, and, and I think uh, Jeannie, correct me if I'm wrong, we can make these free lists available. Do you have access to free lists that we can send out? There are some, again, we wouldn't be on it, but there are, there are a number of lists that are circulating with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of free resources for families. Um, there's a, there's a Facebook page called school at home COVID-19 that also has like daily lessons and things they can do kind of in that K3 space. That's a Facebook page. Um, so school at home COVID-19. Um, and then, uh, and so those are, those are things that they can do without, you know, coming directly to us. Right. But then for schools and districts, they can come directly to us at homeaccess at waterford.org. Okay, and Jeff, going back to what what Ann was just saying, I mean, this is the, these programs are out there. Mm -hmm. Like online learning is out there. It, it's always been, and, and and it's probably pretty easy to find. But Jeff, you know, point to not just what K twelve is doing, but there's a lot of other companies out there. We're yeah, we're not here. It, to it's Waterford and K twelve yeah. free resources. So talk about that if you could, because we're getting a lot of questions from rural areas. Help us. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, you know, this has been a such a, a tragic and sort of national crisis, but it's also been, you know, really awesome to see the way in which ed tech providers and the online learning and space, the innovators in the field of education have really come together. Um, and, you know, we want to do our part as a company, K-12 as well, too. So, you know, those resources are probably almost too much right now. It's an avalanche. Right. Uh, and I know the challenge right now is for the communities to sort of try to filter that to find out specific needs and specific solutions. And so we're trying to do that as well on our end. And, um, you know, for, for us, we have, um, we have the capability to be able to serve uh, parents and families directly, to be able to serve educators uh, and teachers, and also to be able to serve school systems, school districts, or 
uh, other brick and mortar schools during this difficult period of time. So, you know, at k12.com backslash coronavirus, that's a whole list of things that we're doing as well too. Um, providing free content curriculum, eBooks, over 17,000 of them available. Um, we have uh, games and so forth that we're, that we're giving away for free as well too. And with school systems, we're offering platform content, teacher training, and specifically in those areas of, of, of how to you know, deal with the equity issues as well too, special education, for example, uh, to be able to provide uh, services to them free of charge for a period of time to get them through the remainder of these, uh, these, these, uh, these months of the school year. Um, and then, and then of course, webinars, lessons, and so on and so forth to help the, the teachers as well, too. But, but give me a website, Jeff. Give me yeah. something. We just sure. offered a whole lot, 15,000 ebooks. That's great. But yeah. give me a website. Now, Where all of that, it? yeah, all of that can be found for, for, for us at k12.com backslash coronavirus. So okay. that's where we're offering it. But, uh, but again, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, and I know I speak for a lot of people in the community as well, too. We just want to do what's right for kids. We know that none, none of this was planned. Nobody expected this. Um, but we want to really step up right now and help uh, our peers in the traditional education system who are struggling, who got thrown into that deep end, as Michael Mo talked about, and, um, you know, are really trying to find their, their footing. Um, taking small steps to get to where they need to get to, to be sure. But we have... And I know many others do as well too, you know, solutions to these problems. So, you know, again, the message that I would say, and I know Jeannie's been really hammering on this, CER has been great. This is not a question of this, can it be done? Uh, I'm sorry, you know, if it can be done, it's a question of, of how it can be done and can and, and it will be done. And so well, I think- I mean, it, And you know, I, I wanted to jump in here too, because this is a great conversation and I'm seeing attention, not just, out there, but even in the questions, and we're watching all of you, and please keep this coming, the, the sort of the tension between people who don't know, like we live this on a daily basis, but there are leaders, representative staff of representatives that are, that are throwing in here, we're going to connect you with, there are people in, in the grassroots, there are leaders, and they don't know this stuff. So we forget that we're all in this you know, a little microcosm of like, we wake up to 5,000 Twitters and we think everybody knows what we're doing. We think because we're doing it, everybody else knows about it. So that's why we're getting really granular. There are not only tons of free products and services, but I'm just gonna go out on a limb here because that's why we brought you here. People can call Waterford. They can write to Waterford. If your district is not doing Waterford and you want kids to have this kind of amazing literacy instruction, we're gonna be talking about a little bit more in a few minutes with others, you can call and say, help me get my district. You guys, people out there have to pressure their districts and their leaders, but then there's also stuff that individual teachers and parents, right, can provide. Even with the bandwidth and the broadband issues we have, there's a lot you can do on paper. There's a lot you can do in your home as we're trying to push for these devices. And, and I just also answered somebody else's question and I'll stop talking and let you guys answer. But there's $30 billion coming to states from the federal government. Do not let those funds just go and sit somewhere. Mm -hmm. It is up to us to make sure those monies actually go to providing support for buying the devices and making sure that they're connecting you with people. I mean, there should be a freaking national hotline. We're doing what we can, but there should be a hotline that connects like Ann with the teacher somewhere or the district or right. K-12 with the school or the parent who wants to do something. So anyway, I'll shut up and, and let you guys yeah, And Jeannie, I was going to say, and just to your point, we are getting these questions um, from, from members of Congress staff and things, we will connect you all. We, we have the questions, we're not going to lose them. We will make sure they get answered. Um, and, and I can't, uh, just having worked on Capitol Hill in, in a lobbying capacity for over 25 years now, it's shocking to me when I see funds just sit in an account and then they get rolled back in. You guys have got to go to your SEAs. You guys have got to put pressure on your local districts to say, access these funds, they've been made available and you can buy these things. You can buy the, the home sign on, um, the, the assistance for getting Wi-Fi. And, and, um, and again, I just want to reiterate, we're not, you know, all, these companies, yes, have been putting offers up, but we have our own website, Jeannie, 
right? edreform.org, uh, and I, is it backslash COVID? And Michael, I think you make a great point there. Um, you know, uh, I, I've lost the, I, we, had, we had a big reform during the Obama years, and it brought, you know, millions and millions of dollars to states. I, I want to say race like- Race to the top. Race to the top. Thank you. I just could not pull that out. I went into a race to the top uh, state two years after they had won about $45 million. The person who was over that said to me, we are two years in, we have spent $22 million and we have not served a child yet. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, so we have to be careful that these funds don't go into, into, a, you know, a bureaucratic mix and become a jobs program. They have got to go and serve these families and these children and get them up and ready and going uh, to be able to, to have these experiences because education changed two weeks ago and it's going and that change right. is here to stay. Right. Um, I think people like Jeff, people like me, I know Jeannie, Michael, Michael Mo, especially, you know, we've been on this path. I started in ed tech in 1998 coming out of a classroom. I thought, oh, in five years, things are going to look different. You know, here we are 22 years later. I think that difference happened two weeks ago, and we're going to see the things that we've all been working towards for all of this time when it comes to personalization, um, using, using ed tech, perhaps grade bands changing. I love Victor Lee's question, do we think internet access is going to become a public utility? You know, I, I think all of these things are changing, and they are going to happen at breakneck speed to a point that that you know even even us that are in the middle of it um, are not are, are going to be surprised by the speed that it's happening but yeah. luckily the work that's happened in this in this industry has allowed has allowed the industry to be ready for this change and yeah. that's and what's been exciting to me the, and there's also the technology out there i interviewed someone for my podcast the other day it's not out yet the head of kajit you know, there, there, there are, yes. there is, is bandwidth in a box. I know, Anne, yes. you guys use it. I know K-12. We, we are just starting with Khajiit. We're so excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so basically something the size of a hockey puck can be put in your, in your room, in your home. And so parents can access that. And I, I learned about it last week, which is why mm -hmm. I interviewed the guy. So there are all sorts of other devices and ways to access information that we need to make sure that the departments of the world, the agencies, the congressional police, the governors, and others um, are really are making are making sure and, that. And just and a quick final thought. Um, Go ahead. Because, uh, yeah, you know, we, we've been toiling in this field for 20 years, just trying to justify the existence of online learning and online schools, and here we are now thrust on everybody. Um, and so, you know, it is really a time for us to step up in, in, in a leadership capacity to be able to be a guide and, and so forth. I, I will say this, I'm seeing some, some early good signs. I had a great conversation with a very innovative authorizer um, a couple of days ago who said that they're, when they, when they, they're expecting those funds as well too, and when they receive those funds, they're going to make it um, a bit online learning a part of their uh, charter across all of their schools. They want to make this so that it never happens again, so that everybody's fully prepared and that we can integrate that into the daily uh, instruction that takes place with the students in the brick and mortar schools, but they will be fully prepared. Teachers will be ready trained to be able to ensure that this type of uh, crisis, should it happen again, it will not impact continuity of learning. So that's, I think, you know, again, uh, when you talk about the federal funds or, or the resources that come in, that this isn't just a one stop, buy a bunch of stuff and put it on the shelf, but that it's integrated as part of the learning that takes place for students uh, in whatever model that they're in. And, and this goes back to the fact that we looked at and, and, and it takes a crisis like this to make the next big jump, right? It takes the crisis to push it to where every kid in the United States. And again, we got to get over this. Oh my gosh, there are for profit come there are non for profit. We need solutions right now. We don't have time to, to quibble because there are rural kids, there are low income kids, there are minority kids, there are, you know, wealthy kids who, who don't still, whatever the reason may be, don't have access to things, right? So let's get over our little hangups right now during this crisis. Let's get 
tools like Khajiit offers, like you offer, like all those companies that are out there. And, and we have a website, you can go to it on edreform.org that, that's putting resources down, that's giving the bright ideas, that's giving the resources that are out there. And it's just, it's time to like seriously say to all of these local governments, these county governments, state and federal government, we got to move on. It's the 21st century. We don't have time to continue to fight about these things. If we are failing children, it's because we're not using the tools that have been available for years. So if you can't reach someone, are you kidding me? I mean, come on. Well, I agree. And I will say this again as well, too, you know, it's sort of what I started off with, which is, you know, for every situation, whether it's a student in a rural area, uh, students who are low income, urban areas, suburban areas, uh, special education students, those students are being well served right now. Those types of students are being well served right now through online learning, through, through uh, uh, programs like Waterford and K-12 and the schools that we serve. And so there's models out there. So, um, you know, I, I just hope that, you know, I know we had a tough two weeks as there was a lot of paralysis taking place across many states and school districts. But I hope now that th that's turning and that the focus now is a sort of a can-do attitude, looking towards the models that, that uh, have been working, that have been serving students, especially those who are um, uh, that, you know, with less means. Um, and that we can also sort of build again, as Michael, you said, that public-private partnership and get over kind of the hangups, political and ideological, divides that that exist in education so that we can get to solutions and start uh, making sure that students are learning. Well, and, and real quick, I'm going to, Ann, go ahead, and then uh, okay. I'm going to let you uh, have a, a 20 seconds in, and then I, I just kind of want to make a point okay. um, that's critical, and it goes back to how do you get these money, how do you get these things unlocked so that they just don't sit in account somewhere. So, Ann, go ahead and wrap I, up a little bit because we're just, coming up on our time. Just as the EdTech community, Waterford, you know, K-12, Waterford, We've got this for you, you know? We, we have been preparing for this moment for 20 years in this community, and schools, you know, trust us, rely on us. Um, Jeff's organization, I'm sure, has, has scads of research. We have scads of research. We know that if children use our programs, that they're learning and they're getting to the next level and they're, and they're working, and so, so, rely on that rely on the fact that we have you know that we've already been awarded federal grants and philanthropic grants and they've done the research to prove that that our research is sound and so you know let us help you and let us be there for you because we're there we're we're ready for you we're we're yeah. ready to take on this challenge yeah and, listen and michael you know, before you say anything i just also want to I, I just want to also um bring up the 500 pound gorilla that some people not everybody i think a lot of people out there are um very much grounded in how do we just get this done first of all everyone on this um webinar is offering their services their support for free and, and, and that's critical. So whether you're like Waterford, that's a nonprofit or K-12, that's a tax paying company and for, considered a for-profit, it really doesn't matter because there are millions of teachers and thousands of parents out there who are literally trying to get a hold of solutions and want ideas and help. Should America pay for it at some point in time, no matter what you are, yes. But right now, we're just trying to make sure that everyone out there has a connected, is connected to someone else. And um, the lack of information, the connectivity on this is stunning because we have relied for years on 15,000 school districts to tell us how to do education. And so when we're suddenly faced um, with doing it ourselves, um, we have an issue. And so I just wanted to bring that up. And yeah, and Jeannie, before we go to, we, we have someone who, who is a leader in this world that we want to get a question from. Uh, but I want, I want to say to your point, now that these parents and these teachers are all forced into it, uh, you all need to join together and start blasting emails to your state and local representatives, whether it's your mayor, whether it's a chair of an education committee for your Senate or your House, uh, House of Delegates or House of Representatives state level, whether it's your congressman. That's where these messages have to go. You have got to start flooding their office saying, why have we never used these solutions to reach these kids before? Right, and, and it's, it, it is an agenda 
it's not Republican, it's not Democrat, it's not for-profit or not-profit, it is a parent-teacher agenda for getting tools into the hands of people that now have to use them, right? Oh my gosh, I gotta teach my kid, why were all these things available and we've never known about them? Why do we not know about the little plug-in hockey puck thing that will give me Wi-Fi? So with that, um, and, and it's critical, and, 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 and we, can, we can go back to telling you how to get in touch with um, your elected officials, but I want to recognize Howard Fuller, who is a phenomenal nationwide civil rights leader who I have had the honor and the privilege of, of working with over the years. Howard, I think you have something that you wanted to put out. Yeah, no, first of all, uh, Michael and Jeannie and all of the, the guests, I, I really appreciate um, being able to be a part of this. One of the things you all know that's happening is all over the country, there are small groups of people who are meeting, trying to figure out how to, you know, how to help. So in the city of Milwaukee, for example, uh, about five or six days ago, there was a call with about 87 black people representing all kinds of different entities. And they were trying to talk about the basic issues like how do we keep people alive? Because in Milwaukee right now, for example, the epicenter for the, the disease is the black community. But there also was a discussion about education. And so then another work group is coming out of that conversation to talk about education. So the question that I had posed and Jeannie responded to it is that you all are listing a lot of companies that people have never heard of. And so one of the things I wanted to try to do is to get a list of those companies and what it is that they provide so I can go back on the, on the phone calls with these small work groups to give them that information because they will get it to people who will never hear from, you know, uh, a, you know, thing like like what we're doing here. You know, people. And and the second part of this is that what I've been saying to people is, this is an opportunity to use other tools, for example, and other schools that have access to people to their their families. Like our school is going to have a virtual town hall meeting with our families tonight. Our families will listen to us, but they're not going to access these other websites that people are talking about because they don't, they don't have any, <laughs> any knowledge of it, right? So one of the things is to try to figure out how individual schools who do have access to parents, how they'll be able to pass on all of this information. So again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be on this, uh, uh, this program. Great, thank you, Howard. And with that, and Jeff, we are going to uh, thank you so much for your uh, for your advice today. And again, you are offering free stuff right now, right? It is on your web. We are not sitting here pushing just for companies to profit. This is practical tools that families oh, can- Oh, we'll get criticized anyway, Michael. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, matter right? Again. <laughs> We're just trying to offer solutions and we really appreciate the both of you. Uh, we're gonna get up here to our next panel